Welcome to another edition of Wings Weekly. Jay Klein Connect with you, as long, along with, of course, head coach Scott Langer. Coach, uh, a big, well, kind of weekend, midday or midweek Thursday game, and then a Friday game up in Minot. A 3 0 win Thursday with uh, Kennedy, Sicoli, and Belial scoring, and Vernon with a, a great game, a shutout for, uh, for Matt Vernon. Then on Friday, a 7 1 win, balanced scoring from Strata, Sal Peter, um, Sicoli, Mikowski, uh, Beattie, and two from John Sladek. Um, as a whole, what do you take away from the weekend? I mean, obviously, you got to be feel pretty good with coming away with a road sweep. Well, anytime you can go on break uh, with a sweep, it's it's good, you know, because you don't have to sit and, and uh, be in a bad mood. That's for sure. But you know, our uh, our guys were they were good. You know, you you don't hear me say that a whole bunch, but they were uh, they, they got off that bus and they were ready to play and. And, and I, I just thought that uh, setting the tone was important. And, you know, we got on them pretty good. And uh, I, I thought both nights was the same thing. You know, the Saturday night, it was the most energetic I've seen our guys on a Saturday night on the road. And uh, maybe it was because of break coming up and they were excited that they're going to get home and see their family. But they played great hockey and, and I was impressed. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the power play went to 2 of 10 over the, the two games, 20%, and uh, the kill was spectacular, going, killing all 11 uh, power play opportunities that Minot had. Um, as you said, things, everything seemed to be clicking for the Wings over the weekend, but uh, the, the specialty team's definitely a big bonus too. Yeah, you know, it was good to see the power play get on the board. You know, again, we're, we're still working on that a lot, you know, just to get a little more consistent. And, and the big thing with the power play is to score when you need one. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, you know, the, the guys are really embracing the penalty kill. We made some changes in that area. And, uh, you know, it's nice to see us move up. I think we moved up to the fourth spot in the entire league. So our guys are really playing well. And, you know, the amount of penalties that are being called right now in, in the games that we've played as of late, we need those specialty teams to click. Great to see. Uh, great to see the guys perform on the penalty kill the way that they did. Uh, Matt Vernon saw 62 shots, made 61 saves, and it uh, has been announced that uh, he is the star of the week again. Back-to-back -back star of the weeks uh, for Matt Vernon for the Central Division. I can't remember a time that that's happened, but uh, boy, Matt's really playing well. I think he's playing the best hockey of his entire career. You know, and he's up to the challenge every night. And you know, there's a reason why you, you win two on the road. You know, Matt faced some, you know, right out of the gates on Friday night. He, his first two shots were big-time chances against us, and, and, uh, and he made both saves, which allowed us to, you know, go down and, and, and score. But he's just playing great hockey, and it's, uh, it's great to see. It's well-earned by a guy that just continues to work on his game, works on his body, and, and he just takes a lot of pride in it. And, and uh, I'm pretty sure the, the college guys are really starting to take notice of what Matt's capable of. Yeah, and rightfully so. Uh, Friday night's game, Coach, you know, you talked about the, the penalties that were called. And I, uh, sometimes I feel like a game can kind of get away from a referee or re pair of referees in that case uh, because they're not calling things early on. That I didn't feel like was the case Friday night. They were calling the penalties when they were, when they were there. But things did get awfully, um, well, messy, I guess, uh, towards the, the last portion of the third period. Almost dangerous at times. Uh, where you had you know fights, you had guys getting uh, ejected, you had a lot of penalties going on. Um, it seemed to me that mine, you guys were just frustrating Minot, and uh, it started to show uh, on an emotional level. What is it like on the bench in a game like that and in the moments like that, and how do you keep your guys steered down the right path? Oh, I love it. Yeah? I love the, you know, the, this team in particular gets real fired up uh, when liberties are taken with our team, and, and uh, you know, speaking to to Miss Doty there a little early about, you know, our team toughness. And, uh, you know, we're not the biggest hockey team, but uh, we're, we're, we're definitely have some toughness here. And, you know, our guys did a great job managing it because the, some of the stuff that did happen uh, was a bit extreme, I would say, with, with guys getting jumped and, and you know, two hand wax that were, were pretty good. But, you know, you got to expect there to be a little frustration. I mean, Minot's a good hockey team and they are the Central Division playoff champions. And uh, to, to be played, the, to, to have the outcomes they had two in a row on home ice, that's not going to settle well. And, you know, if I'm a coach and, and my team just lays down, you know, when that's happening, I'm, I'm mad, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I think from, from their standpoint, at least they showed a little motion. I think a coach likes that. But uh, from our side, I think our guys manage it really well. You know, the Pitter stepped in on the one play, did what he had to do. Um, you know, Kennedy had Beatty's back, you know, and, and as soon as Joey got the major two hand across them, 
uh, our guys were right there, and we were there with five guys. So, you know, it's uh, it, it's uh, it, it, real extreme different than when we played Chippewa at home, and and we had a big we had a big number up on the board. Those guys kind of policed it uh, well on their side. They didn't uh, they didn't overreact. So. But from our side, I thought our guys handled it really well. Yeah, I did. I thought so too, Coach. Um, you know, last week we talked about being happy with where this team is at here at the break, and obviously things were clicking along nicely. And I hate to pick things apart, kind of, but moving forward, what do you see as uh, areas that you'd like to see more improvement? And I guess maybe kind of in relation to that, do you continue to refine the things that are working, or do you kind of move on to other things, maybe add some wrinkles, add some different things? Well, I mean, it's the team that's going to get better after break is going to win this division. You know, you've seen our team last year after break. You know, I think we rolled off seven in a row. Mm -hmm. um, you have to get better. You know, once they get back here, obviously a lot of the, all the principles are staying the same, but you have to improve as a hockey team or else you're not going to finish at the top yet. You might not finish in a playoff spot. So I, uh, I, I think it's refining. I, I mean, I think all areas have to get better. You know, we're a good hockey team right now, but we want to be the best in this in, in this league. And, you know, in order to do that, our preparation has to be good. Our practices have to be good. Um, and we're not going to be complacent just because we've won 20 games before break. I mean, that's that's not the ultimate goal here. So uh, I, I if, if I'm a betting man, this team comes back in this locker room very eager to get back on the ice and win games. Okay. Well, Coach, um, obviously the boys uh, at home on the break, spending some time with their family and friends. What, are the, what does the break look like for the coaching staff? Do you guys get a chance to take some time off and away and maybe see some extended family? Or, how, or, or do you guys just work straight on through? Um, I'd say a little bit of both. You know, Coach Hill's out recruiting right now, and, and uh, I'm going to catch up on some stuff, especially some college stuff for the players. But uh, I'll spend uh, my Christmas here in Aberdeen. Um, and, and Coach Hill will be back home in Dallas. Okay. Well, before we move on to Brookings, I wanted to ask you what your favorite Christmas memory is. You've been going back to Scott Langer as a, as a small child or wherever. What was the, is there a memory that stands out for, uh, for a, a special Christmas? I don't know if I can help you there. <laughs> I don't, oh. Well, I kind of put you on the spot here, too. Yeah, I mean, you know, since I moved away from home when I was uh, about 17, turning 17, uh, there was many times I've gotten to go back and, and spend Christmas with my mom and my brother, which to me has always been very special, you know, because we just don't get to see enough of each other with, with me out here in the Midwest and, and them out on the East Coast. Sure. Excellent. Okay, well, we talked about... Um, a little bit anyway about what what's coming up and that is Brookings and when the, the, the players get back you, j you jump on the bus and head down to Brookings for on the 28th and there is a fan bus we'll talk about those details coming up in just a little bit here um, but um, th I would imagine there's a little bit of a challenge just to make sure that these guys are mentally prepared to get back into the grind is that fair to say oh very much I mean you you want your guys to, to have a good break I think it's very important for development that they take a break mentally but uh, they got to turn it back on the second they walk back in this dressing room on the 26 and and they have to have a couple good practices because we only have a few and uh, you know but I think with the leadership we have here I think we'll be okay all right coach well um, again the 29th here at the OD and then on the first, again, or not, excuse me, not the first, but the 31st, the New Year's Eve game here at the ODI Center, too. And again, details on those games coming up in just a bit. But, Coach, I appreciate you taking some time to talk to us. So we'll take a break and, and return in just a moment. But, again, wish you a, a very Merry Christmas to you and your family. And, again, thanks for coming on the show. You as well. Thank you. We'll be back after these words from our sponsor. Let's make a taco. <laughs> no, seriously. Start with a tortilla, soft tortilla, warm it, kiss it, don't kiss it. Chicken? How about tequila lime chicken? Now we're cooking. Slice this, peel that, snip those. Salsa? Verde. Cheese? Cotilla. Oh, forgot to mention. Guac. That's better. See, anyone can make a taco, but we're not anyone. We're Qdoba, and these are knockout tacos. Qdoba Mexican Eats. Choose flavor. Welcome back to Wings Weekly, and folks, as you can see, a uh, special guest joining me on Wings Weekly today, President Greg Odie. Uh, Greg, 
Wings uh, have been experiencing a lot of success so far through the first part of this season um, and all the work that you and your family put into this, it's got to feel pretty good uh, going into the holiday break. Yeah, it's, this has been a fun season. They're all fun, some more so than others, but uh, the team's doing well. The fans are awesome. Um, everything we've been doing is clicking and, you know, it's just a big team effort and I'd really want to wish the team, I didn't get to see them before they left, congratulate them on a great series in Minot and uh, wish the team a Merry Christmas, wish the fans a Merry Christmas, Christmas, the billets and everybody that's associated with the team. We've got a lot of blessings here and we've and we've got a lot of things to be thankful for, for sure. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure that uh, the Wings fan base and everybody would like to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas as well. Um, we have some specifics to go over as far as um, games upcoming, you know, uh, with you guys adding a fan bus, which is just amazing. Last week or the last time down in Brookings, the fan bus went down, brought about 40, 40 some, 42 people, and it, it felt like a home game. It was incredible. But Friday, December 28th, the fan bus is leaving to Brookings. $28 includes your ticket and transportation to and from the game. Bus loads at 3.30, departs at 4, and will return right after the game. For more information, you can call Aaron at 605-380-5852. Then on December 29th versus the Brookings Blizzard here at the Odia Ice Center, Dakota Broadcasting is the corporate sponsor. The Lady Cougar Classic ticket deals are going on there too, and skate with the wings after the game. Chance to welcome them back and get out on the ice, get some autographs and so on. And as I mentioned earlier, December 31st, New Year's Eve party here at the Odia. That is against Brookings once again. The doors open for all Wings home games at 5.30 and the puck always drops at 7.15. $10 general admission tickets are on sale now at any of the 4C Express locations in Aberdeen with additional purchase. And for all of the latest news and information, visit AberdeenWings.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and on Instagram. Greg, again, I uh, thank you for coming on uh, here briefly. and. and Addressing, I guess, as you mentioned, the the fans and the and the players, everybody. I'd like to join you in in basic in basically saying Merry Christmas, and we'll see you all over uh, New Year's Eve and down in Brookings coming up uh, after the break. I did miss one thing. The if you haven't seen it, go check out the Wings video that the boys put together. I mean, awesome Christmas thing, and also the store is open this week. Lots of great Wings stuff there. Nancy and Aaron are gonna be working it, so you need some last minute presents. Um, the hours are on, uh, on Facebook and on our website. Thanks again, everyone. Absolutely. Perfect gifts for you, the Wings fan in your life. And as Greg said, you can check it out on all kinds of social media. It's being shared all over the place. The Wings Facebook or, or a Christmas video. It's definitely not something that you want to miss. That will pretty much wrap up this week's Wings Weekly.